All right. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? You guys all awake? Can everybody understand American English? That's okay. I don't even speak English that well. I have like a special dialect from the East Coast, so I apologize. Listen, I'm going to try to do a little something different today. It's, it's really fun to come to Israel for me. I've been, I've been coming to Israel now for 25 years. It, it's, uh, it's kind of amazing to come here and see all the innovation that's been occurring, the wonderful impact that this community uh, is having in the world of high tech, and really all the improvements that have been occurring. It's great to be a part of the Tel Aviv University as well and to see the excitement and enthusiasm that's happening in this marketplace. So a lot of, lot of fun. I've been, uh, I'm now chairing uh, three different uh, cybersecurity companies here in Israel and having a wonderful time watching these companies grow and uh, make an impact themselves. So I'm gonna do something totally different, no vendor kinds of things today. I'm gonna tell you about four big threats. And then I'm going to tell you about four big trends and opportunities in cyberspace. I've been pretty fortunate the last two decades to be a part of a lot of interesting companies. Um, I've been a part of McAfee, of course, RSA, uh, Mandiant, FireEye, a lot of different uh, organizations. Uh, lucky to you know, drive more than $25 billion of market value for my companies and uh, hire you know, 10,000 plus people into this uh, environment. So it gives you a frontline seat to what's going on. And I wanna spend a moment maybe before I go into the, the future, maybe just to learn from the past just for a minute because after responding to thousands and thousands of incident responses and kind of being on the front line between a lot of nation state activity and criminal activity, you know, you get a little bird's eye view to what's happening. So maybe I could just pop that up a little bit and show you. You know, I think about history this way, and uh, some of you might have heard this before, but whenever mankind discovers a new domain, what happens? Well, we conflict over that domain, right? Discovery of lands, discovery of oceans, discovery of air, space, and now cyberspace. Over the centuries, we've always had major conflicts whenever a new domain has been discovered, and cyberspace is really no different than what we've been seeing for centuries on this planet. And it's interesting to watch, but there's some really fundamental differences in cyberspace, right? What's the biggest? We don't know who our enemies are. Very difficult to understand attribution. Anonymity on the internet has changed everything. Obfuscation of the attackers has changed the way we do things. When we had battles in lands and armies and armadas in the oceans and air wars, we always knew who our enemy was. A very different situation here in terms of what we have in cyberspace. What else is different? Asymmetrical theater, right? We live in a very different world. The offense and the defense are very different. In my 20 years here in cybersecurity, you know, it's been interesting to watch how powerful the offense is, how weak the defense has been, and how the trends and technology get exploited. You add to that all the innovation that's occurring on, and now the integrity of the internet, and what do you have? Kind of a perfect storm in cyberspace. And if you look at all these attacks and danger levels over the last two decades, from hacktivism to crime to espionage to terrorism, from quantity-based viruses, how many of you know some of the old viruses? When I was CEO of McAfee, these things like I love you virus, Melissa viruses, code red viruses, you know, hit millions and millions of computers simultaneously. At one point in our McAfee engine, we had more than 100 million unique signatures. Imagine that, 100 million unique signatures. But that gave way to a lot of quality and highly targeted attacks. And I bore witness to a lot of those with FireEye and Mandiant. We ended up responding to more than 5,500 American breaches related to the Chinese military and organization around an IP war between two superpowers. Pretty big epiphanies for me as I watched what was occurring on there, all around stealing intellectual property, gaining advantage and in innovation. We moved to the information warfare that we're now seeing between two more superpowers, and we have these really interesting chemistry, a petri dish of dangers and scenarios that are unfolding. So what are the biggest threats we're seeing? You know, all these big goodies, hopefully you can see the slide here. What's the number one thing we see in every attack, nearly every trend? Exploitation of human trust, right? If you go back to the 5,000 plus APT campaigns that we responded to, almost every single one of them started with what? Spear phishing, stealing credentials, logging in, taking over. 
establishing footholds, a whole series of commands and controls that could be put in place, but all starting with human trust exploitation. So how do we think about fixing that? So what are some of the biggest trends I see right now in high-tech communities? How do we think about authentication intelligence? I invested in a big company called CallSign, all about trying to create analytical behavioral intelligence to authenticate one peer to another peer. If we can stop valid credentials, we can maybe put a slowdown into spear phishing type attacks and credential type attacks. Probably still the largest one we see. Cyber extortion, of course. We saw Dorit talk about that, responding to a lot of ransomware. Some of the scarier ones that we start to see here is we're seeing a lot of ICS and IoT types of attacks. And I'll talk about that in a minute. If we think about our industrial control systems, our Internet of Things environments, offense and defense have a massively wide gap. So what things should we start to worry about as nation states, as vendors, as we start to see the list of all these types of attacks? And what's probably the biggest nemesis of security vendors? Privacy, right? We got the pendulum of privacy versus security. As the pendulum swings more to privacy, more difficulty with security. As it swings more towards security, more difficulty with privacy. So as that pendulum goes back and forth, we have a lot of trends, a lot of threats, and a lot of opportunities in this marketplace. So what are some of the biggest ones that I see today? Four big ones. Probably the biggest areas we see venture capital going into the cybersecurity market. Probably the biggest areas I'm seeing offensive attacks occurring. The rate and speed of the Internet of Things is amazing. I'm sure you all know this. I'm sure almost everybody here has a watch connecting to a satellite right now, or at least to a uh, CDMA cellular device. And we're seeing more and more of this consumer electronics connecting, becoming pervasive as part of our critical infrastructure. And what kind of defensive tools do we have in place? What kind of controls and safety and standards do we have for consumer electronics that are plugging into our critical infrastructure? Zero. So when you start to think about what's at your home, when you think about what's at your office or at your corporation, where is the weakest links now in your architecture? Is that that thermostat you just plugged in that's connected on your network? Is it that HVAC piece of equipment in your building? Is it that Bose speaker that's connected up to a satellite pushing marketing intelligent could be any one of those. So more and more of this connected environment has created tremendous vulnerabilities. And someone is going to help solve that problem. So the security industry is really evolving. You think about how it relates then to all of the industrial markets. This is a gigantic problem. I'm working with a company right here called Clarity, which is very interesting. How do we start to put behavioral analysis into the operational technology protocols? If you look at the 2,200 vendors in cybersecurity, most of them are focused on IP protocols. What about the OT protocols? How many people know what Modbus is, DNP3? There's hundreds of protocols that are part of our critical infrastructure that are running with no authentication, no encryption, and are not air-gapped from our IT network to our OT network. So those of you who know this, the lack of segmentation between networks offers the attackers a major advantage, and of course, the operational technology is mission critical to all of our industries. Our water supply, our energy supply, our transportation industry. I sit on the Delta Airlines board, I chair safety and security. Take a guess how many SCADA sensors are on one single aircraft. 20,000 SCADA sensors. Take a guess how many data gateways are on a single large aircraft. 14 gateways data gateways, and they have air to ground and they have air to satellite. So think about the vulnerabilities that are now in place because of all this transformation. It's very interesting to watch what are we going to be doing from a security trend point of view and a threat point of view as we industrialize our entire infrastructure and the pace and rate of which it's moving. What's the newest domains that are hitting us? Social domains. Pretty incredible. How many people saw that one coming? I'm sitting on the Delta board meeting at one point. We see a viral video go out. We have 100 million views before we could even finish the conversation on what to do in a crisis. It's a very difficult environment to social network right now. Recruiting terrorists, using it in part of the kill train, being able to falsify information through the social networks. The virality of our social information is incredible. The offense has a tremendous advantage in this domain 
And how many security tools do we really have that are cutting across all the social networks, monitoring the integrity of these social systems next to zero? So this domain's presenting an unbelievable problem in the information warfare that we're about to see, or already seeing, particularly in our election processes. And if you start to understand the flow of information, there's a whole lot more attack vectors coming because of this information attack. And who are the biggest victims? The social media companies in breaches over the last 18 months. So think about what's coming downstream. I draw the back the analogy to 2008 when I responded to a breach from one called Operation Aurora. Do you guys remember this? This was made famous by Google. When China was after this, we discovered 153 breaches all in high tech. What were they after? Source code, the bug databases. What were they trying to do? Vulnerability research, trying to discover zero days so they could perpetrate more attacks downstream. What are we seeing now? A lot of breaches in the social media system. What's that gonna be? Now a preface to a lot more attacks coming in the information warfare game. Very interesting to watch what domain happens and where we're going with that. The last but not least is amazing. How many of you are paying attention to what's happening in the sky? Satellites. Anybody know what OneWeb is? A mesh, our new internet, is now being presented in geostationary orbiting uh, satellites. Most of the transponders are connecting up. Most of the devices are going from ground to sky, as opposed to fiber link on the ocean floor. What kind of security do we have from there to satellite? Think about the data exfiltration problems in the command and control servers when you have data exfiltration moving from ground to satellite. What kind of air defense system do we have for that? How do we stop a DDoS attack on a satellite? What kind of protocols do they have? What kind of authentication is there? What kind of identity controls are there? Not a lot. So when you think about the offense and defense across these four vectors, you see what's coming in cyberspace, and that's what I've been paying attention to. So take a look at a couple of the trends, and I'll wrap this up. A couple things, the talent shortage is a major issue. So what's it doing? It's driving a lot of demand on almost every security operation team on every Fortune big company, right? We don't have great talent, so what's it doing? is putting a real strain on being able to manage the alerts, being able to understand the fidelity of those alerts, the context of the alerts. You heard the other speakers talk about it. So what's been amazing about cybersecurity? It's resilient too. A lot of artificial intelligence tools come into market, big data, machine learning types of tools to get after the fidelity of the alerts so we can really lift the restraint that's on the talent shortage that we have around the world. Big problem that we're seeing. Of course, as you look at the transition to the cloud, what an opportunity. I often talk about the Maginot Line, which between World War I and World War II, the French built, of course. And what did we learn from that? Almost the same thing we're learning in today's cybersecurity. The defense in depth architecture at the perimeter is easy to evade. So how do we learn as we move to the cloud on how to improve that security? And by the way, there's a lot of improvements we can do as we move the infrastructure in the cloud. So last but not least, you can see some of the tools that are occurring here. It's fun to watch artificial intelligence. It's fun to watch AI integrate with everything that we're a part of. And ultimately, we're starting to see a lot of wonderful trends moving in the direction of solving these new domains. So I hope that helps you a little bit and hope you understand, at least from my perspective, what I'm seeing in the marketplace. And uh, wish you all well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Um... Thanks, Rick. Out of all the technologies you mentioned, is there something that should be very relevant very briefly to the nations that they develop, or it's all commercially to develop and let the companies compete on this until something comes up? Yeah, yeah Doreen, I, I, the, one that, the one that I'm most interested in is, is our satellite service okay. providers mm -hmm. right now, because when you think about the, uh, the fiber and the way our internet was first built, the large broadband providers had a lot of security mm -hmm. opportunity. The government can work with that. As we think about our great satellite service providers, how are we going to learn from the past mm -hmm. to the future? And perhaps as we start to see the new internet, mm -hmm. our, our nationwide defenses mm -hmm. need to include the satellites, of course. Very Thank good. You. Thank right. you very much. Thanks, guys. With that, we're going to move to Bruce Schneider.